COVID-19 pandemic posed a barrier to equal and evidence-based management of older patients with cancer. It has caused a substantial disruption to health and healthcare systems that are likely to last for a prolonged period of time. Older adults, especially those with age-related conditions, are underrepresented in clinical trials that define the standard of care for cancer treatment. Oncologists struggle with a complex and often complicated decision-making, as oftentimes the decision is not straightforward and needs a personalized approach. Older patients tend to have multiple chronic conditions that compete with their cancer. They may have a significant impact on their organ reserve and function, increasing the prevalence of treatment-related toxicities, including hospitalizations, treatment discontinuations, functional decline, and death. However, we also know that older patients benefit from standard treatment as much as younger patients if carefully selected and monitored. Older age, comorbidities, and cancer are significant predictors of adverse outcomes of COVID-19 infection. The case fatality rate for patients aged 70 years or more was reported to be around 8 to 12 percent, and this can go even higher up to about 18 to 20 percent for patients older than 80 years. In contrast, the case fatality rate was 4 percent or less for patients younger than 70. Several comorbidities such as cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, chronic airway disease, or renal impairment, as well as cancer, have been shown to increase the risk for worse outcomes from COVID-19. The COVID-19 and Cancer Consortium database published in Lancet in June 2020, showed that active or progressive cancer have more than five times the risk of 30-day all-cause mortality. Same thing was true for those with at least three comorbidities and poor performance status. In this cohort of more than 900 patients, the median age was 66 years, and patients aged 75 years or more have higher rates of death without ICU admission. At present, personalized care is the standard approach when treating older patients with cancer. With COVID-19, it becomes even more imperative that such approach is followed to avoid the risk of over-treatment, where the risk of harm outweighs the benefit, or under-treatment, where, there are less, um, where a less standard treatment approach was undertaken simply on the basis of chronological age alone. With more resources getting depleted and with the focus of care tending to shift to those with higher chances of recovery, older patients with cancer are at extreme risk of being disproportionately disadvantaged during a pandemic. Several geriatric-focused issues have been identified as a result of community-imposed quarantine and physical distancing from COVID-19, and this may include feeling of estrangement, abandonment, and neglect due to limited access to news or information, friends, family, or carer, decline in communication and comprehension due to isolation, lack of digital access, and also even from wearing masks, especially for those who have hearing impairment, who rely on lip reading and other nonverbal clues, ensuing dependence on others to provide their basic needs such as food, medicines, and other home supplies due to travel restrictions or lack of access to transportation. Common community supports such as meals on wheels, cleaning, or other home supports that allow older patients to remain independently at home have also been disrupted. The conditioning is also common from lack of physical activity, increased risk of delirium, which is usually under-recognized, as well as mental health problems are common. So in order to mitigate the negative impact of COVID-19 on the management of cancer in older adults, the SIAC has brought together a COVID-19 working group, which includes members from different continents and with various specialties to develop recommendations, guidelines and action plan based on expert opinion and available evidence related to and applicable to geriatric oncology. We also aim to facilitate the conduct of research on this topic and the rest of the responsibilities are there. It is important to stress though that the data on COVID-19 in older patients with cancer are still limited and rapidly evolving and that the recommendations could change. 
The practicality and logistical planning depends widely on the available, available resources and, of course, guided by the prevalence of COVID-19 in your state or country. Geriatric assessment is used to evaluate the competing risks when deciding the management of any older patients with cancer. It gives us an insight of the physiological age of the patient, as well as their risks of, of frailty that otherwise would not have been apparent if not assessed adequately. As a standard, when we see these patients, we take into account several factors, including their disease biology, the risk of recurrence or progression, and whether the available treatment is suitable or safe, efficacious or too toxic. Based on what we know from their geriatric assessment, we are able to weigh the risks and benefits of the proposed treatment in addition to predicting their risks from dying from their cancer versus other age-related causes such as comorbidities. However, with COVID-19, this presented an additional challenge in an already complex way of managing older patients with cancer, as not only is COVID-19 an extreme contender for risk of death, it also depletes valuable resources. So in order to reduce the need for more frequent travels to cancer clinic or hospitals, mitigate further exposure, diminish risks of toxicities and hospitalizations, as well as to prioritize or conserve resources, several adaptations have been recommended on the management of older adults with cancer during a pandemic. Some examples include the use of less toxic regimen, or an alternative anti-cancer therapy with fewer visits or less frequent dosing. Use of oral anti-cancer agents um, when possible, but weigh in the toxicities versus convenience. You can choose to switch to subcutaneous therapy over intravenous, such as trastuzumab, if indicated. Consider, consider a short course chemotherapy, such as a maximum of three months chemotherapy, especially for a higher risk stage two or a low risk stage three colorectal cancer. Omit oxaliplatin for stage three colon cancer, as there has been no evidence of benefit in older patients. Consider deferring or delaying adjuvant chemotherapy and or radiotherapy if necessary. Omit adjuvant chemotherapy for hormone-positive HER2-negative early breast cancer when the benefit is small, especially for those with lobular histology or luminal A-like subtype. Similarly, an upfront neoadjuvant endocrine therapy may be considered in this setting to delay surgery. Consider single-agent anti-cancer therapy or upfront dose reductions or even treatment breaks for patients with low volume disease and or stable metastatic disease. Provide shorter courses or hyperfractionated radiotherapy or even single fraction radiotherapy for symptomatic bony metastases or metastatic spinal cord compression. Omit radiotherapy when the benefit is small and other effective medical treatments are available. Prioritize the use of the most effective and minimally invasive surgical procedures, cohort surgical operations in a COVID-19 free area. Whenever possible, favor procedures requiring local versus general anesthesia. Consider omitting surgery when other effective treatment strategies available, such as using primary endocrine therapy for hormone receptor positive HER2 negative early breast cancer, or stereotactic radiotherapy for amenable tumors in selected older patients with stage one or two non-small cell lung cancer. Use systemic chemother chemotherapy before debulking surgery to reduce post-operative complications without compromising efficacy or overall survival. Use growth factors to minimize the risk of neutropenia and its complications. And last example would be use telehealth and home-based treatment services. COVID-19 is an emerging and rapidly evolving condition that warrants tailored care and assessment depending on the disease prevalence in your country. As the society grapples with the pandemic and how best to deliver cancer care in older patients, there is an urgent need to act now to protect the vulnerable 
and mitigate the pro projected negative outcomes in this age group. As this is unlikely to be the last pandemic that we will encounter, it is imperative to take this unique opportunity to learn and devise management plans for both present and future use.